Hello there guys, welcome back to another Epic Inexorable Maths video. In this video, we're going to prove that 8 to the power of n minus 1 is divisible by 7 for all n in the natural numbers, okay? So we're going to do this by induction, and so I'm going to assume that you already have a pretty decent understanding of how to use proof by induction, how, you know, what the steps actually are, and we're just going to go straight in. So the first thing we want to do, there's four steps. Number one is we need to do the base case. So this is the base case. The base case is just for the smallest value of n that you're trying to prove this for. So for all natural numbers, the first natural number is of course the number one. So when n is one, that's our base case. And we can see that we have eight to the power of one minus one, which is the number seven. And seven is obviously divisible by seven, okay? Because seven is equal to seven times one, which means it can be factored into obviously the number seven times an integer. So therefore, the statement holds for n equals one. Lovely. Moving on to the next step, this is our assumption, okay? So what we're going to assume is that the statement holds for a arbitrary natural number k. So we shall assume that there is some k such that eight to the k minus one is divisible by seven i.e. that means that we can say that 8 to the k minus 1 is equal to 7 times some number, I'll call it p, where p is a natural number like this, okay? So if 8 to the k minus 1 is divisible by 7, I can write it as 7 times another natural number, of course. That's our assumption. The next step is the induction step or the inductive hypothesis. So what we're going to do in this step is we're going to show that if the assumption holds, we essentially have that the next natural number, not k, but k plus 1, 8 to the power of that minus 1 will also be divisible by 7. So if the statement holds for k, it holds for k plus 1 as well. That's what we're going to try and prove. So the first thing that we should do is actually write out the expression using k plus 1 rather than just k. And that's this here. Then what we can do is we can split 8 to the k plus 1 up. We can write it as 8 times 8 to the k. That is 8 to the k plus 1. And then I need to put my minus 1 out there. Now, I'm looking at the assumption because we're going to want to use the assumption somehow. And you can actually see that I've kind of, I've sort of got it. Like I've got 8 to the k there. So what I can do, there's several ways of doing this. So maybe you do it a bit differently to me. But does it make sense that I can just rewrite this thing as 8 to the k equals 7p plus 1. That's the assumption as well. I've just rearranged it. So I can say that this is equal to 8 times 7p plus 1, close bracket, minus 1. Hopefully that kind of makes sense what I've done there. I've simply replaced 8 to the k with 7p plus 1. Because if 8 to the k minus 1 is divisible by 7, then 8 to the k can be written as seven times some number plus one. Okay, that's all I've done. And then of course, we can just go and expand it back out. So eight times seven is 56. So I've got 56 P plus eight and then minus one. Okay, and then I've got 56 P, 56 P and then plus eight minus one, that's just plus seven. And then what, I'm, what I want to do, because I'm trying to show that it's divisible by seven, is I'm gonna factor a seven out of both of these terms. So I'm gonna go seven, and then I've got 8p plus 1 like this. So what I've just shown, and of course we know that p is a natural number, what I've just shown is, if the assumption is true, then what we what it says is that the next natural number after k, it will also hold for it. So if it holds for some number k, it will also hold for the next natural number after that as well. And of course, because we're doing induction, we've already proved it for the base case when n is one. What that means is we have basically, we you could imagine that k is the number one for a second. So we have, if it does hold for one, then we've just shown that it holds for two. That's what the inductive hypothesis was. But we know for a fact it holds for one because we specifically proved it, which means it definitely holds for two. And if it holds for two, then it holds for three. That's the inductive hypothesis. So it definitely holds for three because we know for a fact it holds for two. We now know for a fact it holds for three, which means for a fact it holds for four and you can go on all the way up to infinity. So what we've just shown in the inductive hypothesis, let me just write this down is if the statement holds for n equals k, it also holds for n equals k plus one. 
And the final step is the conclusion. So there's four steps. This is the fourth one, the conclusion step. The conclusion is always the same with every single question, improved by induction, more or less. And it simply says, therefore, the statement holds for all n in the natural numbers, okay? And of course, that's just the logic of induction. So hopefully everyone's familiar with basically the principle behind proof by induction, but that's the idea. So there you go, that's all on the same page there. That is the entirety of the proof that eight to the power of n minus one is always divisible by seven for every single natural number. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, share with your friends and family. And of course, guys, I will see you in the next one. Cheers.